The machine looks impossible at first glance, a humble cage of coils, a rotor, a handful of magnets and a frame that could fit inside a garage. No fuel tanks, no solar arrays, no windmills. Just motion. Silent. Relentless. And in the dim light of a cramped workshop, a name from the past whispers through the noise, Tesla. Not the company, the man. Nikola Tesla, obsessed with the idea that electricity could be uncoupled from wires, from bills, from control. They called him mad. They tore down his tower. They buried his notebooks. Still, a dream lingered, what if someone, somewhere, finally nudged that dream back toward reality? Today we trace that whisper to a device called the Liberty Engine 2.0, a compact electromagnetic system built in a garage workshop and presented as a working prototype of independent power. This is not a miracle claim wrapped in bravado. The people behind it do not say it breaks the laws of physics. Instead, they say it pushes the boundary of what can be achieved with careful engineering, rare earth magnets, and obsessive attention to loss, and they've filmed the whole thing running. Tesla's forgotten vision is the backdrop. At the turn of the 20th century Nikola Tesla imagined wireless power and abundant energy for all. His Wardenclyffe experiments were about radio, and, if you read his notes, about liberating energy from the constraints of wired networks. Investment dried up, the tower fell, and a century of electrical infrastructure grew around centralized generation and metered consumption. The idea that energy could be cheap and widely distributed became dangerous to stakeholders who depend on scarcity. Conspiracy or not, the myth endured, somewhere, the key might still exist. Tinkerers kept poking. The Liberty Engine 2.0 is not Wardenclyffe. It doesn't promise wireless power transmitted across miles. It promises something different and, crucially, smaller, a self-sustaining electromagnetic generator that uses motion, magnets, and low-loss design to supply continuous alternating current without a grid connection. The claim, carefully worded, is not perpetual motion. It is, reduce every source of loss so far that the device can sustain its rotation from the electrical energy it generates, while routing usable output to external loads. That's an extraordinary engineering proposition. Extraordinary, but not impossible on its face. Look at the hardware. At the center is a rotor fitted with N52 neodymium magnets, among the strongest permanent magnets available. Around it sit tightly wound coils reclaimed from microwave transformers, rewound with precision and encased in resin. The rotor is made from a custom aluminum silver alloy chosen to minimize eddy currents, those tiny circulating currents in metal that act like invisible brakes and turn useful energy into heat. The whole assembly is balanced to near perfection, no pulleys, no belts, no friction-prone gear trains. A simple pull cord, like an old lawnmower, gives the first spin. After that, the team says, the system takes over. Here's how they describe the loop. As the rotor spins, magnets glide past the coils and induce alternating current, Faraday's law in action. That current appears at the outlets. Crucially, part of that energy is fed back into the motor circuits to maintain rotation. The rest is available for external use. Because the design minimizes losses, low resistance winding, resin sealed coils to reduce heating, a low eddy current rotor alloy, and a direct drive layout, the feedback can, in their tests, keep the rotor spinning at a steady speed while powering loads. The numbers the team presents are arresting. They claim a steady 230 VAC output, the nominal voltage used in much of the world, at a sustained 1,400 revolutions per minute. Peak output, they allege, reaches 20,000 watts, during demonstration tests the device powered an iMac 27-inch, a heavy-duty drill, an angle grinder and a water pump in sequence without flicker or voltage sag. They filmed an unedited teardown to prove there were no hidden batteries or external connections. Every component was laid bare on camera. Skepticism is warranted and healthy. The Liberty Engine's backers are not shy about that, they invite it. They do not use the word, free energy, with abandon. Instead they say magnetic momentum, ultra-low losses and smart wiring create a practical, 
self-sustaining loop for useful durations. They acknowledge limits, bearings where, magnets demagnetize under extreme conditions, resin can age, and the system is not infinite. It requires maintenance and, in their own words, improvements to scale for a household. The most contentious technical claim is the balance between energy returned to the rotor and energy drawn off for external use. In classical generators there is always a prime mover, gas, steam, wind, hydro, supplying mechanical power that the generator converts to electricity. Liberty Engine 2.0's assertion is that, by minimizing every avenue of loss, the mechanical and electromagnetic coupling can be efficient enough that the system supplies part of its own motive power through carefully routed electrical feedback. That comes down to precision engineering, perfectly timed switching, phase alignment, minimal resistive losses, and near-zero friction. If any of those conditions slip, the loop collapses and the device requires an external input. The team freely shows tests where it does run down when overloaded, and tests where it sustains under moderate load. What makes this more than theory is the footage. In an isolated field test the team set the engine on a concrete pad, started it with a pull cord, and began plugging in devices. An iMac sat on a wooden table, a drill and grinder were wired to the outlets, a water pump drew from a nearby reservoir. The camera rolled uninterrupted. Voltage meters recorded steady AC output. The rotor held 1,400 RPM. The devices ran, one after the other, without visible interruption. Heat measurements showed the coils remained within operating temperature. The teardown camera later disassembled the unit on a bench, showing no auxiliary batteries, no hidden capacitor stored out of frame. That video is raw, it's in the description. Still, there are hard questions. How long can it run unattended? What maintenance intervals are required for bearings, magnets, and windings? Can it tolerate weather, dust, and continuous heavy load? And crucially, can you scale it to reliably power a home day after day? The team does not claim universality. They describe a technology at version 2.0, promising, repeatable in specific tests, and deserving of further independent verification. There are practical advantages even at prototype scale. For off-grid groups, disaster relief operations, and remote workshops, a compact generator that can deliver hundreds to thousands of watts without fossil fuel could be transformative. For field scientists and explorers, a silent, low-maintenance power source is appealing. The inventors also point to open-source iteration, by sharing their methods and inviting third-party replication, they hope to accelerate improvements in materials, magnet grades, and thermal management. The Liberty Engine 2.0 is as much cultural as mechanical. It revisits an old narrative, Tesla's dream of liberating energy, and folds it into a modern maker ethos, garages that iterate designs, document proof, and publish results. Whether the device becomes a revolution or remains a remarkable prototype depends on reproducibility. Science advances by reproducible tests and independent verification. That's the litmus test this project now faces. So what do we take away? First, this is not a magic box. The team repeatedly says they don't violate conservation laws, they instead exploit engineering margins and magnetic dynamics to create a self-sustaining loop under controlled conditions. Second, the device works in the narrow, repeatable sense demonstrated. Third, enormous engineering work remains to prove longevity, safety, and scalability. If Liberty Engine 2.0 evolves, who benefits? Communities off-grid, humanitarian missions, hobbyists, and anyone who values decentralized power options. If it fails to scale, it will still have taught engineers what components and geometries matter when you chase ultra-low-loss electromagnetic systems. This machine sits at the intersection of myth and method a modern artifact of a Thomas Edison versus Nikola Tesla narrative, remixed for a 21st century workshop. It asks a simple question, what happens if we stop accepting the limits imposed by centralized systems and instead tune every loss out of a small machine? The tentative answer the Liberty team offers, useful, independent electricity, not infinite, not omnipotent, but real enough to power tools, lights, and hope.
Maybe it will be a footnote, a brilliant detour. Maybe it will be a seed. Either way, it reminds us of something essential, the frontier of technology is often navigated by people who refuse to accept the polite shutdown of a wild idea. If you believe energy should be as freely accessible as the air we breathe, the Liberty Engine 2.0 is a story worth watching, not as gospel, but as the germ of a possibility. Maybe the next step forward will be built in a garage, by someone prepared to ask, test, and share. Could that someone be you?